What's up guys, welcome back, to, welcome back to another video. And in today's video, um, we got the Supra once again, and uh, we got a bunch of modifications that I've also been holding on to for a very long time now. I literally got this package about two months ago. You guys saw the Keys Motorsports package I've held on for three months. So yes, I am trying to install literally everything because I am daily driving the Super right now, guys. And honest to God, like my wholehearted opinion, owning FAD M3s, owning E92 M3s, owning pretty much an, I have owned an i8, but I don't really put this in the same category as that. But owning a lot of M cars and just traditional BMWs, I am not gonna lie, this by far drives my favorite and looks my favorite just straight from the factory. It also could have to do with the color. I absolutely love this color. That's just another reason why I overpaid for this at the auction because I it's rare to see a yellow Supra and uh, man, just guys, I absolutely love this color. The fact that it's a BMW but also has a Supra name is like two bangers in one. I literally got stopped the other side of the road these kids were yelling at Supra. I'm not really driving the MK4, this is an MK5 but oh my God, guys, I love how this car has the recognition and I love how this car performs um, really, really, really well. But today, we're trying to have this thing perform a lot better. I, not even a little better, a lot better. Hmm, I wonder who that can be. <laughs> oh, it's my boys at Simply Carbon Fiber. <laughs> Welcome Simply Carbon Fiber to the family. They're an accessory that pretty much saved my life. I never spend any money on myself, my clothing, anything at all, honestly. The only stuff I ever buy as a car enthusiast for myself is the cheapest shirt I could find and the cheapest pants I could find uh, because that's what gets me day to day. I spend all my money on my cars and that's pretty much it. I have no accessories for myself until I met Simply Carbon Fiber. Their accessories are so, so, so sick and they're pretty much car inspired. This is a forged carbon fiber wallet that I actually keep my receipts and my cash in, also my cards as well. I have the regular carbon fiber wallets and I also have their forged carbon fiber watch. Now, if you ask me, Nor, how many wallets do you have? I have three, one that my wife got me, never bought one myself, and then the only two that I bought were the regular carbon fiber and the forged carbon fiber wallets from Simply Carbon Fiber because they look so, so, so good. And honestly, they're super minimalistic. I just shove it in my pocket, take it out, and literally fits anywhere that I ever go. I literally love this thing. And when it comes to watches, I had one watch that my dad got me. I had this watch that my wife got me that he pretty much used for work because I'm gonna work underneath the car. I check my messages, you know, my Apple, you know, messages, stuff like that. But I don't really have a watch when I go out with friends friends and family to, you know, just flex with or anything like that until I ended up copying the Simply Carbon Fiber Forged watch. That thing looks so, so, so good. And every time I'm driving in my car with my Carbon Fiber watch, it just looks so amazing. And it's truly made out of high quality material. If you guys want to get yourself a Carbon Fiber accessory, make sure to check out Simply Carbon Fiber down below. So right over here, guys, is a bunch of goodies that we have from Burger Tuning. We have a JB4. Um, the reason why I went the JB4 instead of other tuners, um, a lot of other tunes, you actually have to crack the DME. This is a 2021. Um, either you have to crack it or you have to go with a specific tune, but either or whether you want to crack it or you want to go with a specific tune, no matter what, it's going to void your warranty on your car. This specific Supra does not have a warranty. As you guys know, we got it from auction and rebuilt it. Um, but for the sake of the video and for the sake that I am currently now a dealer for burger tuning, your boy is an official dealer for burger tuning. I am very, very, very proud to say I've been working with burger tuning for a long time. I absolutely love their product and I absolutely love their tuners. For those of you guys who don't know, I'm a very OE type of person. Now, I love my carbon fiber mainly because that can get removed. I don't like to do any modifications to my cars that I can't easily reverse back. It's just kind of my thing. The thing is with burger tuning, the thing is that I love, their tuners leave no trace on this car. I know most of you guys have um, a, a warranty on your Supra. These cars are literally 2020, 2021, 2022. This one specifically is a 2021. And definitely, if you guys have a 2021 Supra, yes, have a warranty. And I would suck to get the warranty voided by putting on another tuner from another company because basically it's not really a tuner, it'd be a flash. If you flash the car, it's gonna be in the DME and your car will pretty much be blacklisted from the dealer. Um, that is honestly best comes to best. I actually have a friend that has a G80 um, M3 that, that ended up flashing his car with a tune and bricked his DME. And that being said, he ended up having to get the car shipped out and it was it was a mess and a half for over like, I think a month and a half or two months, um, they, they ended up getting a new DME which cost an arm and a leg and they had to get it all way flat he voided the warranty. Um, it was just a bunch of headaches for no reason. And that's the reason with this car specifically, we're definitely gonna be rocking the JV4. So not only do we have the JV4, which is gonna add so much more power to our car, but we also have the wireless connect kit, which is gonna make it super easy to use from inside the car completely wirelessly. And you guys know your boy, um, we had to get some aesthetic modifications at 
the same time. These bad boys replace the ugly strut braces that are in your Super. That's the only thing I don't like on this car. And when you get an F80 M3 or an M4, you have the beautiful carbon fiber brace that sits in the engine bay. The Super doesn't really have a nice engine brace. So these billet aluminum engine braces are gonna look so, so, so good. And we also ended up getting this match with a billet oil filter housing. This is gonna look so sick side by side with this. And I'm kind of going with the red theme because the car came with red calipers. Um, so from the outside, I'm just gonna have a few little red accents. Even if you guys look in the headlights, um, it's got some little bit of red accents in the headlight itself. So I figured we're gonna be going with a yellow and red theme throughout this entire car. Just little touches um, like this intake duct right here is gonna be in the center behind the bumper. You're gonna see a little bit of a red intake duct that's gonna direct air, which is gonna be super nice. It'll look good, it'll perform well. And again, everything here, guys, if you guys wanna get this bad boy, this, 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 it's all gonna be on my website, so the link's gonna be down below. And we also did end up picking up a oil catch can um honestly guys this is probably gonna be one of the easiest oil catch cans to ever install that's actually a reason why i picked this up now because this is my daily driver for now just as kind of like a preventative maintenance piece to kind of avoid more issues down the road for those of you guys who don't know what an oil catch can is um it basically stops oil um from recirculating back into your intake manifold and that's why you see a lot of people with n54s if you have to do walnut blasting and a bunch of things and your car will lose power if you don't have something that kind of catches that oil that is recirculating that shouldn't even be there like honestly all cars should come with the factory oil catch can but i think that's going to be a great addition to the car in terms of preventative maintenance i think the jv4 is definitely getting an amazing touch in terms of power and then of course we got those three modifications right there for some aesthetic modifications because i just love my aesthetic modifications now without further ado guys i'm gonna have dedicated install videos to all this stuff on my second channel it's mostly gonna be kind of like a time lapse in this video but for those of you guys who are wondering you know how hard it is to install the jv4 how hard is it to install any of these products I'm gonna have links to dedicated videos on my second channel with links to my website for all these products right over here. But without further ado guys, I think the first thing I wanna go ahead and install will probably have to be the JB4. We are gonna have to remove a couple things in the engine bay to get the JB4 fully connected. So I figured while removing everything and getting the JB4 in there before reinstalling everything, we can go ahead and install the new parts, which is gonna be so much nicer. So now the first two things we have to remove is this guy right over here. Just go ahead and turn this. This whole thing just comes right on up. And the second is gonna be this engine cover right over here. This just comes right on up, no screws either. Now there's two ways to install this JB4. There's the way that you can go through the firewall and inside the car to install it, which is more of kind of like a permanent thing. Not a permanent thing, it's definitely reversible, um, but more of like a, you don't wanna keep removing it type of thing. For our case, and the reason why I got a JB4 is because I like to be able to remove it super quick, super easy. So I'm actually gonna be installing it and routing the cable through the door, um, which is again, not really the most ideal way if you're looking for a clean way. Uh, if you're looking for a clean way, there's a little grommet you pop and you go through the firewall. If you're looking for a quick and easy install and a quick and easy uninstall so you can take your Super in for warranty if it has any issues, I'm gonna show you the best way to do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and just put the JB4 right down here. There's actually padding uh, and uh, stuff right there next to the brake boost. So if I just leave it down there, honestly, and then grab this wire, and there's a little piece you can just tuck it underneath this plastic, you can easily route this cable now to the engine bay. I'm actually gonna route it underneath this strut brace, which are definitely gonna have to be upgrading with a burger tuning one. This is just one hideous strut brace. It looks like you literally picked this off a of Camry and extra metal and you threw it on here. I don't know what Toyota was thinking. When you collaborate with BMW, you need to put some BMW quality stuff, you know what I'm saying? But anyways, we're gonna go ahead and just route the rest of these cables underneath this strut brace. And just like that, guys, we're already 25% done with this install. So now that we have the cable pretty much routed, we have the JB4 where we want it. We're gonna go ahead and connect the map sensor first. So the map sensor's on top. There's a T-map sensor right over here. And then there's the EWG sensor down there, which is a little bit harder to get to, um, but it's not really hard, just more time consuming. Everything, honestly, is very easy to install. And that's what I like about this. No need to get behind the engine or anything like that. On the Supra, it is a very easy install. So if you guys are looking at the engine straight on, that is where you put the oil into the engine that right there is your map sensor so we're going to go ahead and just disconnect the map sensor and plug in our piggyback harness um which is i mean let's go ahead and just route this first actually now that we have the pretty much the harness routed the way we want let's go ahead and just disconnect this sensor um basically you can either use a flathead or your finger honestly my finger has seen abuse and uh <laughs> I, I i i can easily just pull this out with my hands and no need for tools I'm gonna go ahead and set this connector back here and plug in the connector. This connector has the rainbow wires. We're gonna go ahead and plug in the connector right over here into the sensor. And then the other end is gonna plug in originally uh, to the connector. Go ahead and just push that white clip back into place as well. And just like that guys, we're already done with the first connection. 
So the next one's gonna be the T-MAP sensor, which is gonna be used in the brown wires on the GB4 harness. So we're gonna be doing the exact same thing, just pretty much pull back on this plastic tab right over here. And once you have this one disconnected, we're gonna go ahead and grab, again, that brown wire, connect it right into there, go make sure you clip that back into place as well. And then grab the GB4, connect it to your OEM cable, and just tuck that in as well. And just like that, guys, we finished two out of the three connections. The last one's right underneath this intake. So to remove this intake, the first thing we're gonna have to do is remove this strut brace, and then we can go ahead and remove the clamp that holds this intake down. Disconnecting the sensor. And now that the sensor disconnected, this clamp loosened, the strut brace out. We can go ahead and just disconnect the air box by just releasing these clips. And just like that, this top section should theoretically just come out. And this bottom section, guys, you just have to pretty much yank on it. It just got some grooves and this whole thing just comes out. So now that we have the intake removed, guys, we just have to move this guy. Just keep twisting this thing upwards so you guys can pretty much see those three little buttons. I'm gonna keep going. I mean, I can see it, but I'm gonna go ahead and just bring it up a little more so you guys can see it. There's three little buttons right here. Pretty much just open it, kind of like you're opening up your jeans or whatever. And uh, that pretty much comes off just like that. I'm not sure you're gonna remove it. Actually, eh, should I remove it? Yeah, I'll just remove it. It makes life a little bit easier. And now we can go ahead and disconnect our last sensor down here. Um, again, similar method as the other ones. Pop that thing out and then connect this cable right here with the blue wire and the purple wire in the same fashion as pretty much everything else. And just like that, we have everything connected. Went ahead and just put that protective shielding back on. And at this point, we can just go ahead and slap in the intake again. And uh, the install is pretty much done in the engine bay. Literally, you just have to route the wire to the OBD port and we're done. I didn't actually reassemble everything just because we have a bunch of other things that we got to install. And why reassemble it all and then, you know, you know, and then um, install and then reassemble and uh, anywho, I'm pulling some shortcuts. We have everything right here, so I'm not gonna install that. We did just install the JB4. I did just pretty much route the wire over here, um, just so again, if I wanna disconnect it easily and get the JB4 out, I can easily do that. And that's the nice thing about having a JB4. And for those of you guys who have warranties on your Supras, you do want it to be easily removable. Um, so if you accidentally get into a car accident or your engine just blows up and you only have like 2,000 miles on, you have a warranty, you can easily just pull the cable through, take out the JB4, disconnect the cables. You can do all that literally outside with just an easy flathead because honestly all you need is a flathead um, to take off everything and remove the JB4. You don't want to try to fish your screwdriver in there or anything like that. So I did it in a way for those of you guys who have warranty, you want to easily be able to just remove everything. That is the way I went about it on this Supra. But obviously if you guys want the cleanest way possible, you go through the brake booster, you pop a hole through there, you direct the wire in there. So anywho, the next modification um, I think we're going to go ahead and install is going to be the oil catch can. Um, just because, I mean, we do have the strut brace removed, at least one of them because that's how we installed the EWG sensor on the GB4. Um, so we're gonna be removing that as well, installing those two. But before we actually do any of that, let's just install our oil catch can. Um, just because I think we just have to disconnect this. We already have everything over here. We have the room, we can easily work. And again, if you guys wanna see more of a DIY, it's gonna be on my second channel, link down below. And guys, just like that, that is looking pretty dang awesome. So we finally have the oil catch can installed. We did do a little modification um, just by cutting the hose a little bit, just so the fitment's really, really, really good. And now the fitment's absolutely amazing. We can easily just pop up the engine cover. You guys can see that is properly installed. Go ahead and just pop that right back on. It just bada bing bada bang. That is so clean, so perfect, and very easy to install. Like I said, guys, this is probably the easiest oil catch car I've ever installed. And honestly, even this JB4 guys on this car, especially considering I didn't go through the firewall, was very, very, very easy to install. So I'm really happy about that. Now off to the fun stuff. So we have the JB4, which is kind of fun, but that's a lot of, you know, that's some wiring stuff. Now we can do some aesthetic modifications. So we're gonna be doing the oil filter housing first um, and these uh, strut bases first before we actually do the air duct. The air ducts will be pretty awesome, but I do have to back up the car. We do have to remove the front bumper, but for the other stuff, we're gonna be able to put it in the engine bay and see it from the engine bay, so it's gonna look super good. See, unfortunately, on the B58, the oil filter cap is not somewhere up in the front, which is gonna look super good. Unfortunately, it is tucked in the back of the engine, which is super dumb. I don't know why BMW decided to relocate the oil filter back there. Oil caps can potentially crack over time. This is a super, it is a newer car, so this is mostly for looks, but also kind of a preventative maintenance issue, so uh, you guys don't have to deal with your oil cap ever cracking down the road, because this is billet aluminum, and this is just gorgeous. Again, mostly I, I did it for the aesthetics. I'm not gonna lie, y'all. So we need to put some rags back there um, just to prevent a little bit of uh, oil coming out. Uh, but yeah, I believe that is like a 28 or 
30 millimeter. Um, unfortunately, I actually don't have that socket size. I pretty much cap out on 27 and then I have like a 36 or something for like axles and stuff. So this isn't gonna work. So getting this oil filter cap is not gonna be fun for me. If you guys have the proper socket, it's gonna make life getting that thing easier. Um, but what's super nice also with the burger tuning one, once we get the other one out, we can easily install this one just by literally using this bad boy, tighten it up, call it a day. Um, plus we won't actually damage any of the exterior so we can keep it red and beautiful. So yeah, installing is not gonna be a problem. It's gonna be a breeze. Getting that bad boy out, we're probably gonna have to use the good old fashioned wrench. And it turns out that a wrench is not gonna work. So I had to head down to Harbor Freight, picked up a 32 millimeter. So it's, it's actually a 32 millimeter. Um, so that is unfortunate. I mean, thankfully it was only five bucks. So uh, let's just get this uh, oil filter out already. And just like that, guys, we got the oil filter in there. So not only do you have the oil filter, the JB4 and the oil catch can already good to go. Now we can pretty much reassemble this engine bay because we're pretty much done in terms of the engine bay. And while reassembling it, we can go ahead and instead of reinstalling that ugly, ugly strut brace that look like came out of a Toyota Camry. Uh, we can install these beautiful, beautiful billet BMS um, strut braces. Again, all this stuff that I'm installing onto this car today is on my website, link down below. And I mean, just guys, like, oh my God, this is gonna be so sick. All right, let's get them installed. So something I noticed, unfortunately, after installing pretty much everything um, is that this, uh, what's it called, oil catch can, it is beautiful, it does look great, it is an easy install, but uh, because this is an aftermarket intake box, uh, I mean, this is an OEM intake box, unless I go with the aftermarket intakes, it doesn't look like that, that oil catch can is gonna fit properly. I'm literally trying to make it fit, but this screw hole is no way it's gonna line up with that when this is in the way. Um, so what I think I'm gonna go ahead and do, because I still wanna rock that, and honestly, I mean, it'll probably still work, is I'm actually gonna drill a hole right back here. So you guys can see there's a hole right over here. I'm gonna drill another one right there just so this bolt can actually go through and then it should be mounted properly. I'm assuming this is meant with an aftermarket intake setup, but uh, I don't have aftermarket intakes right now and I wanna rock that. So in the meantime, I do not want this thing hitting my positive terminal and just freaking making so much sounds and stuff. So, so yeah, here's the before. I'm gonna go ahead and drill a screw hole right there and I'll show you guys the after. All right guys, snack break. This is much needed. Oh man, working on cars is fun and all, but if you don't eat, you're about to pass out. <laughs> it is such a hot day today. Shout out to my boy, Nick, the guy that helps me with all my coding. He got me, he sent me these when I had COVID and I uh, saved a few for special days like this. And uh, God bless that I did, cause these are so good. If you guys have never tried these before, they're actually not that expensive and they're really good. All right guys, so thankfully my plan did work. I ended up drilling that hole. That screw ended up working out perfectly. So now I can actually rock that with a stock intake, which is perfect. So at this point guys, it's time to install the strut braces because, oh my God, that's gonna be the game changer. Look at those two red stripes in the middle. Imagine another red stripe there, another red stripe there with those V braces. Oh, it's gonna look so good. Without further ado, let's go ahead and just get those bad boys installed. So the next thing now is this bad boy right over here. So this is a very unique mod. Um, this is actually uh, not burger tuning, but I got this through burger tuning. And again, this is on my website as well. This is more of like an air duct. And I believe this is from, here's the instructions, uh, Velosa Tech. So um, this does seem to be like 3D. I think it's either 3D printed or some kind of like printed design, um, which also means it's very, very, very lightweight. Like this thing, honestly, guys, weighs little to nothing. We do have the intake boot right here, and then we also have the red accent, which is gonna sit right over here. This is actually gonna be seen through the front grill, this center front grill right over here. It's gonna be a small accent, and it's gonna direct air straight into our intake. So it is a mod, and it's still, and it is gonna be a subtle accent. It's gonna look really good, but unfortunately, we do have to remove that front bumper. Now, it is late in the day, and your man could call it a day, because we did install four modifications, and we should definitely take out the car to enjoy the JB4, 
but maybe we'll enjoy the GT4 in the next video. Because honestly, it's a little late right now and I don't want to take this out in you know, the middle of the night, put on extra, God knows how much more horsepower and then do something stupid. I want to be able to see the road. So um, yeah, guys, we'll make that another video, possibly honestly the next video. I actually have one more carbon fiber mod that I'm gonna be doing. So we'll do another carbon fiber addition mod and then also do the JB4, should be fine. I'm gonna be trying to get back into the every other day uploads. You guys really, really, really missed that. And at the same time, my new schedule is kind of all over the place. And a lot of you guys always hit me up. It's like, Nor, when are you uploading? And I was like, oh, I just uploaded. They're like, wow, you haven't uploaded in over a week. And then I upload. So uh, yeah, that is my fault. I shouldn't be, um, you know, making a schedule that's really weird. I'm gonna go back to my every other day upload so you guys can expect a video not tomorrow but after tomorrow and then not the day after after tomorrow but the day after after tomorrow so any is nor enough talking let's go ahead and back out the supra and start taking off this front bumper guys i'm not gonna lie these strut braces just add so much character to this car <laughs> it looks so much better i want to just drive with the hood open <laughs> that looks too good Anywho, um, so yeah, guys, to install this bad boy, we do have to remove this front bumper. So that being said, um, yeah, we have a bunch of screws. I remember removing this bumper when we first got the car to get it on the trailer. This thing has a bazillion screws. I'm hoping I don't have to remove the carbon fiber lip to remove the screws on the bottom. If I do, it's gonna suck, but I have to. So you gotta do what you gotta do. And just like that, guys, you have the front bumper removed off the car. So pretty much where this intake is gonna be mounted, um, I think we have to remove this as well because it's gonna be routed from behind this headlight, I believe, and it's gonna come right over here. Because if you guys look at it, there is a stock intake duct right there. So I'm assuming you're gonna route it right behind the headlight and it's gonna come straight down. When I say I believe, do not worry, guys, I know what I'm doing. So first things first, guys, we're gonna go ahead and remove this section right over here, just so we can actually put the template down and do the little bit of trimming that was needed. Um, so to remove this piece, it's just held down by a couple, I believe like T30s. So I'm gonna go ahead and just unscrew these, yeah, two down here, two over here. All right, now that we actually removed that piece, we're gonna be using this template to do some cutting. Uh, so this little template right here, we're gonna put it right in here and it actually sits perfectly. It's literally just designed to just sit around this area. Now we're gonna go ahead and just grab some kind of uh, Sharpie or something and just get, just draw the inner circle here. So once you actually draw the inner circle there, we're gonna go ahead and just Dremel all this out. Or if you guys have a multi-tool, you can just use a multi-tool and just cut that entire section out, guys. <laughs> So now that we actually have our four holes drilled out for the screws and we have this area pretty much marked up, now we can actually use our multi-tool and just cut this area. Make sure you don't actually cut this wire, keep it off to the side so you don't you know, mess that up and just use your Dremel or some kind of tool you guys, or just use any tool that you're comfortable with. I just prefer a multi-tool. I think it's kind of like the best tool for something like this. Um, I mean, there's, there's a million ways to cut through plastic, but this is my favorite way. So now that we have the hole drilled out, now we can actually insert this guy. Before I'm actually gonna install this personally, I'm actually gonna install the red piece that goes around it. And that's literally just like four screws. So I'm gonna go ahead and just tighten that up first and then we're gonna go ahead and reinsert it and put in the four screws that hold this bad boy on. So now that we actually have the red lip on there, let's just go ahead and get it installed. So now that we have this piece 100% mounted, literally the four screws, this thing's not really going anywhere. That thing's so tight on there. So the next part is actually getting this piece in there. So we're gonna kind of just set it like this, and then we're gonna be sharing that same screw that that plastic piece was sitting on. Uh, but in the meantime, we can't actually put that piece on until we actually put the boot back in here, um, which is this guy right over here, this little, um, whatever you call this. We got the two clamps over there, literally just clamp it down, clamp it down, and then put back on that plastic piece, and bada bing, bada bang, guys. We got this bad boy installed. And at this point, guys, we have everything reassembled. Uh, we can go ahead and just stop on that front bumper and we should be able to still see that beautiful new intake. And 
and just like that guys it is the next morning i was gonna actually try to get the jv4 um like us actually driving the car in this video but this video is already going to be about 30 minutes long and i don't want to drag it out too far and you guys won't be able to actually see the driving clips so hopefully if you guys are excited to see the driving clips of the jv4 on the super and how it performs with the super exactly because i'm pretty excited i'm about to i'm about to go get some chipotle and hop on that uh make sure to smash that like button you guys will hopefully see it again i'm trying to do the every other day upload so make sure to smash that like button if you guys are excited to see that video and then hopefully after the jv4 video we're going to be starting the e91 project and i have some good news because i finally got the donor car yes you guys heard it we got the donor car it is getting shipped out here from texas so it's gonna be here hopefully a week so if you guys are excited for that make sure to smash that like button and put your thoughts down below what e90 m3 what spec did we end up getting i know you guys are gonna be pretty happy with this um, because it's pretty dope. With that further ado, if you guys enjoyed this video or want any of these modifications, again, make sure to check out my website. I also have some other retrofit kits on my website as well, and also some merch. I will be dropping some new merch, hopefully, when we introduce the E90 M3 donor car to the channel. A lot of good stuff coming up, so without further ado, I love y'all so much. Remember to stay humble. I'll see you on the next one. Peace out.